Okay, so we'll start off just like we did with the other sections in this unit. Um, we'll take a look at a graph and we'll compare its absolute value. So for example, if I was to bring up this graph here, um, let me get some software to help because my skills are terrible as they are. Um, so the range on your graph is about negative 8 to 8, and it's about maybe 7 to 7. So that should look kind of like what we've got on the screen. Y equals 4 sine pi over 4 times x. Okay, so there's the, uh, there's the original graph. Just It's already on there, but just so you see, it's, it is actually the same. And uh, I'll make this the same size even. Uh, hey, there, the numbers are even the same. That's perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to compare what do you think is going to happen if we apply another transformation where we're going to put the absolute value on this graph. What do you think could happen to it? Somebody who maybe was sleepy for a squat and now is like... Jonathan, you want to take a stab at that? What do you think? Can you make a guess what might happen if we uh, put the absolute value on that function? Something will change, yes? That is good. <laughs> what does the absolute value do? Everything becomes positive. So make a uh, make a guess then. What do you think is going to happen? The negative part's going to disappear. Okay. Well, let's see if that's. Uh, okay. So now I've just got the absolute value on it, and the graph actually ends up bouncing. Um, it's harder to see when they overlap, um, so I'll get rid of the original. That's the absolute value that we were just looking at. Okay, It kind of looks like a bouncing ball. So basically what happens is when it gets to that x-axis and it wants to become negative, the absolute value kicks in and starts turning it positive. So that's why it bounces back up. It's not allowed to go underneath the y-axis. Okay. So <coughs> let's copy this into our notes. I'll try to catch up with you on it. So let's put into words here some of those ideas. So the absolute value transformation is related to the regular graph. And we want to split it into, you know, unfortunately, most of you have probably been told that, oh, all you do with the absolute value is throw away the negative sign. And that works up until about grade 11 or 12. But then once you need to start thinking about absolute value in a mathematical <coughs> sense, like how do you describe throw away the negative sign, well, in a more mathematical way, it means what we do is if the graph is positive, so what we're talking about here are positive numbers. Um, this is the great part about being absolute value is half the time you're on vacation. Because there's nothing to do. Okay? Um, but when the graph is a negative, Instead of saying that we're going to just toss the negative sign, we actually want a mathematical operation. So how can we take a negative and turn it into a positive by doing one operation? Take times by negative one. Yeah, that's a good one. Times by negative one. If you times negative one on a negative, then um, it'll become positive. So this is what happens. So if we multiply by negative one, like Ellis just said, what's happening? What do we call that in transformations? It's reflection. Yeah, it's going to be a reflection. And where did we see it happen? The x-axis. So that's what's actually happened here is, is we're really we're saying that if you're negative, we're going to reflect in the x-axis. So if the point x, y is on the graph, then the point, well, what do you think? X and hmm. okay. How many?
of people think it should be a negative y. That works for the negative numbers, but unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work for all of them. Maybe it's because it's <laughs> maybe it's just uh, one of those complicatedly obvious sort of things. But it's going to be the absolute value of the coordinate. Okay. But you'll see the reflection um, because we've been using all this language and transformations, talking about it as a reflection and using it as a reflection. It's going to be uh, uh, handy as well when we start graphing these. So here's the one thing that absolute value can kind of uh, mess people up a bit. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to notice these two transformations. And let's talk about the difference here. So the difference is written down in English in the notes. But what I mean is, do you expect that these two graphs will appear identical? They have the same set of transformations. Right? There's a vertical expansion. There's an absolute value. There's a left and a right, or sorry, there's a, a right and an up translation. Do you expect that when you looked at these graphs, they would be the same? Or do you expect that maybe there's a difference because of the way they've been uh, transformed? All right, let's do some uh, democratic math. Who thinks that these two functions would look the same if we did that transformation? Good for you for being different. How many people think they will look different after we do the... Okay, so lots of you say different, but how come? Why do you think? All right, you're on a roll, Alice. Go for it. Let's see. Because the plus sign will somehow make it look different. Yeah, well, basically what the magic sort of idea is the order of operations. If we think about what order you would apply these things, okay? If we were to forget that this is transformations, let's just say it's some number, right? Like if I said to you, what is two, whoops, that's the highlighter, I think it's the, <laughs> switch to the pen. So like what if I told you, I want to know what's two times um, three minus one plus one, right? Then what you would first do is three minus one, right? Your order of operations, you'd say, okay, that's two times the absolute value of two plus one. That's four um, plus one, which is five, right? Well, it's gonna change the order of operations when we move those absolute value brackets, so it may not always be the same because we may change the order that we do the transformation. So basically what we're gonna practice now is let's just see that we can work out what comes first here. Okay, so let's try it and see how we do. There are three transformations here. Which one do you think comes first? Not everybody at once, and not Alice. You take a break. <laughs> David, can you help us out? What do you think comes uh, first? Uh, so can you describe the transformation for me? Like this uh, graph will. Okay, but which transformation in there comes first? translation does come first. Okay, so what we would do is, first we would do a right by one. Okay. Then what do you think we would do next? Sure, Jackie? Mm. Say two, but Alice? Yeah, so first I think we would probably want to look at the absolute value. Um, in this case, Jackie, I think you'll still get the same result. Um, but just because we're using the absolute value, it's nice to think of them as brackets. So you do everything in the brackets first, then you do everything outside the brackets. So it's kind of nice if we do everything in the brackets, absolute value, then everything after the brackets. That way there's kind of a nice sequence to it. Okay, so Jackie, you probably would have gotten the, the same answer as us if you did it that way in this case. So that point, if I went from 1, negative 3, would go right 1, so I'd be at 2, negative 3. Absolute value, okay. it was negative, turn it positive, and vertical stretch of 2, I should now be at 2, 6. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is look at these next two, and maybe if you don't quite understand it, discuss with a neighbor. See if you can figure out, first of all, you have to know what's going to come first. 
Okay, so figure out what order these, these transformations will happen and then see if you can track the point. Okay, so um, everyone's working so diligently, I'm going to interrupt you for a second and I'm going to ask, what about this next one? What will come first? And I'm specifically going to look on this side of the class. Oh, thank you, Kayla. Exactly. So the first thing we do inside these brackets is to go left one. Okay, what else do you think we would do next? Oh, sure, Kayla, keep going then. Yep. That is perfect. So down five is last. So if we started with the point one, negative three, and we went left one, we'd be at zero, negative three, zero, three, zero, negative two. So that's where the final point is. Now here's one thing that people sometimes assume that like, well, if I have absolute value, I shouldn't have any negatives in it. Well, that's not necessarily the case because when I subtract five, that's not affected by the absolute value, right? We did the absolute value first. So it's still possible to have negative numbers in here, like 0, negative 2. So that's where we end up. Okay. This one, holy smokes, looks complicated. Um, what's the first thing we should do before we even talk about this transformation, Jackie? Good. So remember, even, you know, anytime we do one of these transformations, we should be factoring out. Otherwise, it becomes difficult to see exactly what it is that we're looking at. Absolute value minus two. Okay, so that's probably where I want to go with this. And then, um, what do you think happens? What would the order be? Sure, go for it, Ellis. Good. So we're going to do everything inside the absolute value brackets first, and we use the normal transformation rules. So the transformation rules would say first, do horizontal stretch four. Then next, do left. Okay, I'm done everything in the brackets. I will do everything uh, outside now. So absolute value. What comes first, a vertical stretch by three or down by two? Right, so vertical stretch and then down two. So if I track that point, which is one, negative three. So if I horizontal stretch will be four, negative three, left by four, it's going to be zero, negative three. Absolute value will be zero, three. Vertical stretch will be zero, nine. And down two.